Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Got a great one from Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. Uh, we're gonna learn how to do The River Is Rising today. Uh, this one is a great one. So it's a great song, it's got a lot of cool riffs in it. Some pretty challenging stuff as well. We're gonna take a look at the whole thing here. Uh, so I hope you'll be patient with me. Uh, a lot of these guitar parts, there's like multiple, you know, kind of dual guitar parts between Frank Sidoris and Slash. So uh, we're gonna be covering all of them. Now, before I get into it though, please subscribe to the channel so you know when I release a new video and you can like kind of like and comment on the videos. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm stuff. And if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, uh, please, please check out my Guitar Academy. You'll see a link to it in the description below. Uh, my Guitar Academy contains all of my guitar courses from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, and theory. I go live there every weekend, every Saturday, just a, a chat with just Academy members, like a live video chat with me. And then um, uh, you also get personal support from me there as well too. So please go check it out. Just click the link below and get a free seven day trial. All right, so let's jump into the song. So I'm two down a half step. Um, so every string down, you'll see the, those notes in the description, but it's just E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. So everything down a half step um, as per Slash's regulations. And um, then we're gonna jump into this intro here. So this intro has Slash doing um, a little bit of a tremolo picking thing. And then underneath that, we have uh, Frank Sidoris um, doing this. So let's take a look at Frank Sidoris' part first. That, so you'll see the same riff uh, is really kind of the verse riff of the song for the most part. Uh, and Slash plays it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna, you'll see both ways here. So we're gonna start with this. So that's kind of an E power chord. Then you hit the open E string real quick again and go three, five on the low E string. And then back to the E power. E power course or this. So we basically are gonna do that like uh, four times, except for the third time you're gonna hold, let the E power chord ring. So let's do this. So just basically like that. And then he starts uh, doing it a little bit. Um, uh, he doesn't do the pause. Mm -hmm. So it's just a... So that's basically one time through the riff there and he just repeats that. So all together for uh, Frank Sidoris' part in the intro. All right, now what is Slash doing? A little bit easier to explain. Just tremolo picking. He's gonna, you can hear kind of, kind of a little muted. He's tremolo picking on the D string here. And you hear kind of his fingers kind of slide down the D string. Real quick. Just kind of muted and then, and then he's gonna slide into the 14th fret there on the D string. And then slide down an octave same string, second fret. So just between those two E's. And that's always just repeating that. Do it like eight times. All right, then we get to the verse. So the verse is basically that second half of the intro that Frank Sidoris is doing. Um, it's pretty much a, a muted version of that. <laughs> so 
So that's how Frank is doing it, but Slash plays it a little bit differently, plus he adds a little fill in there as well. It looks like this, this how Slash is. to the uh, pre-chorus. So Slash is doing the same notes, but he's doing it across strings. Um, he does this a, another time in the song with one of the other uh, riff that happens a little bit later. Um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to play, but he's Slash does a lot of economy picking across strings. Uh, if you don't know what that is, he's kind of doing a double down across the strings, which makes that kind of stuff easier. It's very natural to him, obviously. Um, and uh, so he likes to kind of play it across strings, but you'll see Frank play it on one string and Slash will do this. So he plays that zero, zero, three on the low E string and then catches the open A string and then back to the open E. Kind of, so it's basically the same rhythm, but just that A is going to be the open A string instead of the fifth fret on the low E. And then um, at the turnaround there, when he's getting ready to repeat the verse, you hear it slash through the zero three on the low E, and he just pulls off two to zero to open D strings with us. again at the very end before you go to the pre-chorus if you want. All right, now we get to the pre-chorus, which is uh, two different guitar, um, same chords, different voicings here. Frank plays this. So that's what Frank is doing. So what is that? That's going to be a C major with G in the bass. So it's a regular C major chord, but you're going to add the G in the bass here. So just move that finger over to the third fret on the low E and then replace the one you picked up with your pinky there. Then we go to a regular D major chord, but we're going to put the A string in the bass. A and second, a D and second version, I'm sorry. And then just a regular E major. Let's try this. Then back through the C to the D again. From there, we're just gonna go to the A power chord. I kind of just do some muted uh, eighth notes, uh, downstrokes on it. And then you can just grab this D power chord here at the uh, fifth fret real quick. Just fifth fret on the A, and then you're barring the seventh across the D. So. All right, what is Slash doing there? So Slash actually mixes it up a little bit. So he's pretty consistent. He plays it this way live. Uh, and then you'll see him in the actual video and he's kind of plays a little bit like Frank does. But um, you can hear his live version is what's being played on the recording. So it looks like this. <laughs> So it's, it's basically doing the same thing here, this C chord, but he's not playing the whole thing. He's just playing the bottom string. So he's playing the third fret and he plays it like this. So it looks like an E chord, but it's played over here. Third fret on the low E, 
Uh, third fret on the A, second fret on the D, and then you can have the open G in there. Uh, or you can just play three bottom strings, really, if you want. And then he's gonna move up. Instead of playing that D here with the A in the bass, he moves up here, and this is pretty much a, a D as well. But he's in a second version, so he just basically takes that same shape, those three bottom strings and moving up two frets, and then go into a regular E. So he has. Then we go back to that C chord with the G in the bass. Now the second time through, instead of going up to this D chord, he's gonna play a first inversion D. And he plays it like this. He plays an open, I'm sorry, uh, second fret there on the low E. Uh, you can have the open A in there as you want, if you want. Open D, second fret on the G, third fret on the B. It's a first inversion D. And back to the same ending as Frank. You can do that as too. Frank might be actually doing that. I'm not sure, but I know Slash jumps up here to the power. Level. So all together for Slash's uh, pre-chorus. Then we get to the chorus. Um, so I'll do Slash's part first here because this one's the one that you hear the most. There's actually a really, I mean, there's always guitar layers. I mean, there's always like each one of these guitars is doubled at least, you know, once. But um, most likely there's three separate guitar, definitive guitar parts in this chorus. Um, one is just kind of holding the underlying chords and then the other one is just kind of doing the riff version of them. So Frank, and Slash do the riff versions of them. I'll show you what that means in a second. So anyway, here's what Slash is doing in the chorus. So it's a really cool riff. So we're gonna start with this E power chord. All right, and then you're gonna jump up here. We're gonna play the ninth, the 11th fret across the D, G, and the B. You gotta just bend them, hit them, and then pick them without the bend, then down to nine. So he basically does that little fill around each chord after each chord. So you hit the E power chord, then. Then we're gonna go to a G power chord. Now this is the open G power chord. So you have the third fret on the low E. You're gonna be muted, muting that A string with the bottom of that uh, middle finger. Open D, open G, third fret on the B and the high E. And then that same rig. Then an A power chord, open A. So we have this. And then we have this uh, little uh, riff at the end, which is really cool. So that's pretty simple though. We're gonna play the third fret twice on the A string. Then play two, one, three, three, two, one. Then over to the open D string. And then three, two, one. E string. When you get to that zero, that's really the E power chord to start the riff over. So we have. So uh, now, I said there's a couple other guitar parts going on here. 
We have what Frank actually plays live. Um, so I think that's probably the main part, but it's a lot lower in the mix than Slashes. And then we have another part that I think that kind of just keeps the chords ringing the entire time. So the part that would keep the chords ringing is just kind of E power chord to the G power chord to the A, and then same riff. But uh, when I see this Frank play this live, he doesn't play that riff. He plays this. So it's pretty much what Slash is doing, but an octave lower and missing one note. So we have E power chord and Slash is doing this. Well, these two bottom strings, the D and the G, you play those same notes in octave lower. And that's what Frank's doing, so he kind of matches what Slash does. E, and then you play the fourth fret on the A and the D, slightly bend them up, and then pick the fourth without the bend, and then the two on the A and the D, so this. You do that fill after every chord now. Same G. A. And the same ending riff. By the way, you'll see Slash play there. It looks like he's playing a power chord sometimes, and sometimes he's not playing a power chord. Might be keeping his pinky there, but he's not playing. It's a single note riff. Um, anyway, so that's what you're hearing Frank do. All right, so out of that, uh, the, the chorus, we have the same intro. Well, the second half of the intro, basically. Um, so it's... picking and then we get to the verse again which is the same as the first verse but just half as long all right so nothing new there and then the same pre-chorus again uh, same exact played the exact same way um, and then from there we get to the second chorus which has a s different ending and, and that's about it but other than that it's the same chorus so it looks like this <laughs> So it was the same thing, except that last riff, instead of going that, we have this. So the same thing, first half, same. But open, after that open D, just now jump down and go two, three, four on the low E string. Frank will do the same thing. He'll match that. So, all right. Then we. Uh, so that's the only difference there. That that uh, second chorus. So just that very ending. Then there's the bridge. So you're gonna kind of roll your volume off a little bit, and we just come to A power chord to a C major. Back to the A. So it's basically, and then back, I think it's back to an A then, after that. And then we get to the actual solo rhythm here. So it's pretty, pretty simple course. Just actually from that D, just from that D. We go back to the, we get to the solo here. All right, so let me play, um, the rhythm for the solo first, and then I'll, I'll show you how to play the solo after that. So here we go. 
Pretty challenging stuff, a riff here, and that happens in the middle of it. And they do this at the end of the song too. Um, and how Slash plays it is far more difficult for some reason. Uh, but anyway, we have um, basically the just kind of like the, the intro, just the, like the first half of the intro. We kind of mute them, and the third one's hell. So then, after you've done that first half of the intro, we have this little riff that looks like this. starts here uh, now you hear slash do this riff a lot in his actual solo too kind of matching them so we have five four three on the low e string you do that twice and then the third time through just do five four and then you start over so we have this five four three just like that So the fourth time playing that riff, after you do the four, five, three, instead of doing this at the, uh, the, the fourth time through, you jump over here to the second fret on the A string and slide it to three. So we have this. One. So that's basically the riff one time through. And he does it three times here on this low, off this low E string. And then the fourth time, you're gonna move it up an octave here. So just to the uh, 765 on the D. Slide from the four to the five. And then we just, uh, the end of it when Slash goes into those blues licks here, it's just the E power chord. So it's kind of just the E power chord. So just three kind of hits with a kind of a long pause between each, and then three hits in a row. All right, now let's take a look at Slash's solo. Now this solo is not possible to get note for note. Don't let anybody tell you different, especially the ending section. He never plays it the same way twice. I watched him play it about half a dozen different times. And on the recording, it's so, it's almost inaudible what exactly is going on. Um, it's kind of buried in the mix and uh, Slash tends to like really really digs in low he really mutes the notes a lot So it's kind of hard to get exactly what's going on Especially the ending there are parts of the solo where we gotta get note for note But there's others that you're you know, it's just you're gonna kind of have to wing it and so I'll kind of show you Similarities to what he does live there um, Like I said, he doesn't really repeat himself live uh, he starts the things out kind of the same, and then he gets that, that ending section, though. It's just um, he does it completely different every time. All right, so let me just play through what I got for you, and then we'll, we'll take a look at this. Here we go. Thank you. 
so like I said, there's little, there's little parts of that that we're not going to be able to get note for note, especially the uh, this that little ascending line the, at the end of the main solo. Then when we get back to the blues things, we can do that note for note. So all right, so for this uh, beginning of it here, we have a little figure that's kind of similar to the riff that's going on underneath it. So we're just up here at the 10th fret there on the B string, and we go 10, 9, 8 twice. <laughs> And then we're going to have... See, but then you go, after you do 10, 9, 8 twice, you're going to do a 10, 9, like three times. And then you're going to pick 10 twice. Then go over to the 8-9 on the high E string. And then we go back to the 10 on the B string. And then back 8-9 on the high E string. So with this. Then back to the 10 on the B. Back up to the eight on the high E string. From there, we're gonna go back down to the, the B string. So after you do that eight on the high E string, you're gonna go 10, nine, eight twice on the uh, B string. So it's kind of teaching a way you, like, you can kind of organize it in your head so it's easy to memorize it. And then what he does is he jumps, shifts back to the seventh fret and picks that twice. Over to nine on the G. Over to eight on the B. And then back to that nine on the G. So we have this. Now he's going to jump back. And this is where the notes, you can start getting, they get really kind of muted and stuff. So it's just kind of another one of those things that he's not, he's going to do something very similar, but not repeat it. He's just, these are these kind of bluesy type licks that you just, everybody's just kind of going for. Nobody does them note for note. It's just kind of like you just change it up a little bit every time you play it. So what he's doing though is so we're gonna start here there's a seventh fret on the hot on the b string hammer on eight pull off to five actually you can go hammer to eight pull back up to seven then five over to eight on the g and then back to that five on the b and then play eight, seven, five on the G. And then back to eight, seven, five again. And then play seven on the D and seven, five on the G, so we have So that, that right there is kind of, you can get pretty close. And then he seems to go back to the, the fifth fret there on the G. And then, then the notes, I think, become kind of more of like that kind of bluesy chromatic. And he plays, but it, like I said, this part is if you listen to the recording, you, you can hear it. It's just really heavily muted, so you can't really hear the notes. So 
there's there's not a lot you can do but except just kind of like kind of continue with the same type of playing so he's kind of working his way down seven six five on the d and the a just shift down to the third fret on the a and then uh five four three and then when you can really hear him come back in with it uh, is when he starts matching Frank with this riff. He does that a couple of times with him there. So when you work your way down. They want the timing to be right when that riff starts with Frank there. So he does that part of that much of it there with it. So basically that riff there twice. Then what he does is he jumps up here and starts doing it um, uh, here at the um, 765 on the A. So, we just, so he's going to pick across those notes tw twice. And then he's going to jump up and play 7-5 on the D. And then here, you're going to move it over to the um, D string, 7, 6, 5, twice. And then here, he's going to hammer 5 to 7. Now here is where things get really erratic um, and, and impossible to completely uh, make sense of. And he does it. I've seen him with do something like that live and then uh, on the recording it's closer to the and um, other parts he's just kind of the other he does a bend on the high so it, he mixes it up constantly so uh, my favorite thing to do here this is a uh, when you get here I did that. My favorite thing to do here. Now, now we're gonna just do what Carl likes. <laughs> Is um kind of a, a little bit of a scorpion's leg. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're just taking the pentatonic up and just what he's going for anyway. He's just taking pentatonic scale. He's going up. He's aiming for that bend. So we basically want to just do what we want ever to do to get up there. And I'm just kind of doing the. Like I said, this is not what he's doing. So I'm playing five, hammer eight, pull back up five, and over to seven. So I kind of just take that lick up, kind of like. I think it sounds alright. Um, feel free to rip it off, slash, if you like. Anyway, we have that lick, and then I just take it up here. 10, 8, to the 9 on the G, and then back to that 8. And then 10, 13, 10 on the B, over to 12 on the G. Here, I just, you can kind of skip this one if you want. Or you can just play. Which is 13, 15, 13, 14 on the G. Same lick. Then 15, 17 on the B to 17 on the G. Same lick. And then and here you can do the lick at the very end, just the octave from where we started. And then catch that height, the A on the height. The, the uh, 17th fret on the high E string. And then a bend at the 20th fret on the B. So that's just kind of something I think is kind of fun to do. It's it's basically what you're gonna want to do is what he's trying to do is he's kind of working his way up just to A minor. And you can do it whatever way you are but you're not gonna be able to do it like he does it on the album. It's just not, it's just too erratic and you can't hear it. So um, just get that out of your head and don't worry about it. All right, now we have this little blue section that ends the section.
That we can do note for note. So we have second fret on the D. Then um, open G string, back to the D, second fret. Over here to the second fret on the G, and pull off two to zero. Back to the second fret on the D. And then back to the open G. From there, we're gonna slide two to four on the G. To the um, third fret there on the B. Back down to the four on the G. Then you're gonna pull off five to three on the B. And then pull off four to three on the G. So we have this. Then you're gonna go back to the four. Slide down to two. Slide down to two, pull off to the open G, over to the two on the D string. And then we're gonna go back and play two zero on the G, two zero on the D. And then back to the G. So we have this. The second time through, he, um, it sounds like he actually does it a little bit longer than he does live, but it's kind of, he adds, he leaves that lick early to meet them with that, the E hits that they do at the very end of the solo that Frank is doing, so enjoy the lick. So that is it for the solo. Like I said, I, I, you know, some of the, I, it's always kind of frustrating when you're doing solos that are not completely recreatable note for note. And, um, but you try to do your best with it and try to get the essence of the video and uh, of, of the solo. And then any kind of licks like the beginning where we can get note for note, that's, that's what we do. But when it gets really muted and kind of like, um, really kind of that improvised affair type of thing, uh, we just uh, deal with it as it is. It's, it's, it is uh, not recreatable. All right, so then we get to a, sor a chorus again, same as the other chorus, but it's just a little bit long. It's just kind of doubled. It's twice as long. And then um, we have the outro section real quick. So after that chorus, um, uh, they just kind of... Let that ring. the same kind of riff that what that happened in the uh, uh, in the solo uh, the the rhythm. it's done twice there and then twice up the octave So then, so that's what Frank is doing there. So it's the same thing that he did in the solo. So, so it's just twice in the low octave. And then twice. 
twice in the opera. <laughs> when Slash is doing the same ending that he did to the solo section. He just does it at the end of the song, too. It's the same thing. Uh, so what is Slash doing over this outro section before that little bluesy ending? Um, so it's the same riff. And he kind of stays down here in this uh, lower octave, I believe. But he doesn't play it like this. He does it like this. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm playing that open A instead of this note. So it makes you do this lick across strings. So it's just an open A and then four on the low E and then three on the low E. So what he does to make this easier to play is he plays a down stroke up, down, so he does that down stroke from the E string into another down stroke from the A. It just repeats the riff the same way twice, going down, up, down, down, up, down. And then he's got a quick little down, up for that little ending, and then he just repeats. So it's kind of awkward. It's much easier to play it like Frank does. Uh, but I guess a slash likes that he can, he can articulate that that top note better, maybe. I don't know, but he's he's really good at that picking, so it's just I guess it's kind of natural to him. So he just I think hangs out on his lower while Frank goes up the upper, upper octave, and then slash goes into his same. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a um, it, it's a fun track to play. It's a, it's a nice song. I, I was just like, I don't keep my ear to the ground with new music too much. So I'm glad you guys recommended it, and um, so I checked it out. And it's actually a really good song. So it's fun to listen to. So I appreciate it. I'll see you guys again soon for Tarlison's 365.com.